Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are going to use Array.Filter to dynamically filter an array. The map array method is a powerful tool that you will use often when working with React. Another method related to map is filter, which filters the content of an array based on a condition, then returns a new array. For example, if you have an array that uses of users that all have a property online, which can be set to true or false. You can filter only those users that are online by writing let online users equal users.filter. And then with for, we, for each user, we say user.online. We return user.online. If the user is online, you push it in or you add it to the online users array. In the code editor, my component state is initialized with an array of users. So the state is initialized with an array of users. So here we have an array of users, which is initialized as the state of the component. Some users are online and some aren't. Filter the array so you see only the users who are online. To do this, first use filter to return a new array containing only the users whose online property is true. Then in render online variable, Render online variable. Users are online, and then render online. Then in render online variable, map over the filtered array and return a list element of each user containing the text of their username. Be sure to include a unique key as well, like the last challenge. Okay, cool. First thing I'm going to do is spread this out so it's easier to read. Um, we have our list of users. So the first thing that we want to do is get the online users, right? So the first thing that we have to do is get the users. So this dot state dot users. And uh, so yeah, this meaning we're pulling from the component dot state, meaning we're checking in the, the state and then users. And if we go this dot state dot users, what comes out is this array. And so we go this dot state dot users and then we can do array things to it. So dot filter. And within filter, we can go function, and we can say uh, user. And then within the user, we can say um, we want to return uh, user dot online. Now I think that should work, but I think what we can do if user dot online. So if true return user. This is how I would do it back in the day, right? And we'll refactor this later to use their syntax here. Um, and then what we want to do is uh, render render online. So now we have a use, list of users who are online. So what we'll say, we'll get uh, Laura, Sarah, Mary, and Jeff. So now what we need to do is take that array, which is uh, users online, and what we're going to do is go dot map and we're going to go uh, function and we're going to say uh, online user and we're going to set this guy here we want to uh, return a you know the list element with the online and then we're going to use the parameter here so we're going to get the online user online user Build error. Online user. Users online. List element. Online user. We want to add the online user into there. Why would that be breaking it? What happens if we just go online user? Then it just gives us online user. Users online dot map. So what if we go Ellie? It's not letting us pass the value in. Okay. So here's what I did. I console logged the um, render, the map render, and it, you see it's coming through. What we're doing is we're passing in the element, which is not what we need. What we need to do is pass in the element dot username. 
Cool. So now we're getting that. Um, and then the last thing that it said, the element for each user that contains the text of their username should contain the text of their username. Yeah. So the key was, was there. Be sure to indicate a unique key as well, like in the last challenge. So here we're going to go key and we should set the key equal to um, the element dot down case. I don't think you can run functions in there. Yeah, we'll just go to, we'll just do the key as the element as well. It'll have capitalization. It won't be as good as it's supposed to, but that's not what we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, so yeah, now I can get rid of this console log. Run, putting the console log in there was helpful though because it showed me where we were. Um, okay, great. I think that we have passed all the tests. Each list item should have a unique key attribute. So yeah, run the test and see if it passes. Looks like we failed. Each list item. Oh, Ellie dot username. Otherwise, we're getting the same problem because we're passing in the uh, the whole um, object of the element that we're iterating through. We don't want to do that. We only want to pass in the username. Cool, and that's it. Okay, cool. And now you might notice that that was this is a function this uses this function stuff is all I'm not in the right place the way that they tell you to do that here is to do the online users and then to use the es6 so online users is equal to this.state.users.filter and then we could use the es6 and we'll still get the same results but i think that we could just return user.online as well and then get rid of this as well filter user, user.online. So I think that this is a way to refactor and get the exact same results. Okay, so you have to say return if you put it onto a new line, but I think if you put it onto the same line, no, okay, so yeah, let's just leave it like this. So this is the ES6 way of doing it. Uh, we can do the same thing down here. This does the exact same thing. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. I think that this is the, uh, the way to do this one. I just like to show the way of refactoring because I remember when I was going through this, I remember the ES6 always threw me off and I was like, why are we using this now instead? But uh, it does make sense to see ES6, but it also makes sense to know why and what we're actually doing. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.